How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. Now in this video I'll be taking you guys through the second installment in our price or underpriced positional review. Yesterday we created the defenders, go check that video out if you guys haven't, but today we're going to focus on the forwards. So this season the forwards aren't really too much of an emphasis, we kind of have two at maximum, you guys might have three, you might have one. In my own personal draft I have two up front, Gabriel Jesus and Erling Haaland. Now I think Erling Haaland is probably the only essential forward at the current moment to own. I do like the look of Jesus, but is he underpriced or overpriced? Well stay tuned to this video to see. But have FPL kind of given us an underrated gem? Well I'm quite excited because they might have. There's a certain kind of strike I'm going to talk about a little bit later in the video that I think might be going under the radar. So quite excited for this video, hopefully you guys are as well. Sit back, relax and let's get straight into it. So I'm going to go over a quick review of how I actually created this video, how I determined if a player was underpriced or overpriced. I went over this in quite a lot of detail in yesterday's video, so in today's video I'm going to go over it quite quickly. So first things first, the player data we used were going to be the points and the prices of each FPL asset, however there's a big difference between the prices and the points. That difference comes about from what season they're going to come from. The prices are going to be the current prices for the upcoming season, however the points are going to be from last season, as that's what the prices are based on. So combining these two points is going to give us a graph that we can then determine who's under and who's overpriced. But which players are going to be on that graph? Well, there is a filter. It's above 60 points. So if a player scored more than 60 points, they will be in the sample for this video. So yes, there might be some players that joined late into the season or kind of got a starting position only late into the season. They won't be included, but I will cover them in a future video. Now the last thing is how we determined if they were over or underpriced was going to be a regression line. So a simple regression line was plotted for the sample of 60 plus points. That's basically an average over the prices and if a player scored more or equal to those points then they're considered underpriced. Now I'll be going over the overpriced options in a future video so make sure that you guys do like this video to show your support for this series. Now if you guys have any questions about how I actually created this kind of an analysis or sample, comment them down below or simply check out the video yesterday because as I said, I did go over more in depth in that video. But let's get on to the actual analysis. So on screen right now, you guys can see the plot. The points on the Y axis are going to be from last season. The prices on the X axis will be from this season. And all the players you see on screen right now are underpriced by FPL. So yes, there's kind of a bigger mission that you guys are probably noticing towards the top side of this graph. I'll be detailing why Erling Haaland is actually overpriced this Premier League season and why you guys shouldn't worry too much in that video. But let's go over from the top right hand side where your eyes are probably at the current moment. Harry Kane is considered to be underpriced after a very strong performance last season. So if you guys are looking at going for another kind of premium striker or premium forward, Harry Kane's definitely the man to go for. But between him and Salah is kind of a debate to look at. But there's a massive difference in price between kind of the 12.5 Harry Kane and then going over the next section at 8 million we have Ivan Tony, Watkins and Callum Wilson. Now you guys obviously know with Ivan Tony, he's been suspended for quite a few months so we wouldn't consider him at the start of this FPL season but we could look at him maybe towards the end of the season. But in terms of Ollie Watkins and Callum Wilson I've seen basically these two options in no one's drafts at the current moment. Two great strikers but the fixtures aren't looking that strong. But then again, most teams actually play pretty well against the tougher sides, so Aston Villa and Newcastle can still pitch up for those games. We then kind of go on to the cheaper options where we have a plethora of options. We've got Dom Solanke, we've got Alvarez, Visa from Brentford, and then Ings and Welbeck. Now the last two options, Eduard and Vinicius, probably would look at maybe an Eduard if he's going to play the majority of games, but can't really predict if he's going to start for Crystal Palace. Then with Vinicius with Mitrovic back from his suspension, don't really think he's going to get too much game time. But there are two options I actually want to focus on or pause on for the current moment. That's going to be Dom Solanke and also Visa from Brentford. Both these two options offer some good value for money at their price points considered underpriced and therefore could provide a nice three up front instead of going for that five in midfield. Also want to have a special mention to Alvarez if Kevin De Bruyne is going to be injured for the start of the season, Gundogan is going to be kind of leaving the club. Will Alvarez be in the lineup instead of Kevin De Bruyne? We saw that last season, especially when Man City were playing five at the backs, Julian Alvarez was playing up front and therefore could be a nice shout. But I don't really think I would recommend him, probably would stick with more of the kind of guaranteed minutes and there's going to be those other assets. Now looking at this graph, are there any assets that you guys are kind of considering? Is a Harry Kane now an option that you guys want to look at because he is considered underpriced or does he ruin your team structure too much? Otherwise Callum Wilson and Ollie Watkins could be great assets to look at at that 8 million price bracket, but I probably would prefer starting with one of the midfielders at the same price. But the one option that I currently have my eye on is going to be Visa from Brentford. As you guys can see, even though he wasn't playing the majority of minutes last season, he's still considered underpriced. And with Ivan Tony missing, it's kind of a debate between Mbumo and Visa up front. 
Now, yes, if Brentford do sign a replacement striker, that's going to kind of uh, put these two assets out of the window. But at the current moment, I can't help but look at Visa as a nice replacement. I'll be detailing more on him towards the end of the video, so make sure that you guys wait for that last graph because it is quite telling. But as mentioned, are there any strikers that you are considering underpriced? Any surprises here? Or are you saving those for the overpriced forward options? But now let's go over the top five underpriced forwards as the description, as the title tells you guys. I'll be detailing the top five distance between their points and the regression line. That line does tell us how much they've been underpriced and there are a few surprises here. So let's start off in the fifth spot. It's going to be Callum Wilson, the Newcastle striker. Got a massive end to last season. Can he continue that uh, good form? Probably see him as a great asset in terms of FPL if he's going to start. Now the big thing, as you would have known with Kieran Trippier, is the Newcastle fixtures aren't too great and therefore it's a wait and see for me. Coming in fourth is going to be Visa from Brentford, a player that I've got my eye on at the current moment, only 6.0 million for his price tag, and if he does start in the place of Ivan Tony, could be an absolute steal. Same can be said about Dom Solanke coming in at third, great asset to go for, will play the majority of games for Bournemouth, but will they actually do well this Premier League season? We then have Oli Watkins at the second place position, will a full season under Emery kind of rejuvenate him, continue this good goal scoring form, and are we currently underrating Oli Watkins? I know I currently got my eye on him, but like Callum Wilson, tough fixtures ahead for Aston Villa, but they could still perform. Then the final option, you guys can probably bet on who's going to be number one. It's going to be Ivan Tony, the most underpriced option in the current game. If memory serves me right, I think he's been underpriced for a few seasons now. Very consistent goal scorer, but as mentioned, he's been suspended for the majority of the Premier League season, but that does make Vison and Bumo even better assets, and that's I wanted to mention him. So just imagine, even if they get kind of less attacking returns than Ivan Tony, if they still get one or two assists, one or two goals, they're still going to be nice valued options. So I don't know about you guys, but currently this is making Mbumo and Visa look like great assets, as long as Brentford don't sign a replacement striker. Let me know what you think about the top five most underpriced forwards in the comments down below. How many of these assets did you guys own? Probably none of them. I myself didn't own any of them. No Jesus, no Erling Haaland. But that doesn't mean that you guys should definitely pick these assets. Now the last graph I want to go over is probably the most integral graph that you guys can see. It's going to kind of validate the reason why Erling Haaland is so strong. So as you guys can see, this is going to be the points per 90 minutes, so points per game that these players did feature in. And you can see at the top by far margin, it's going to be Erling Haaland. Now that's why Erling Haaland is simply the best asset to get an FPL at the current moment, because you guys are going to captain in most game weeks, and therefore it's not only those 9 points, it's 18 points. So that's why even though you might be considered to be overpriced, that's if you don't captain him. Because you're going to captain only Haaland, please keep him in your team. Next up though, we have Callum Wilson, an option that as mentioned, had a very kind of fiery end to last season. If he can play a full season, just imagine how many points he's going to score for Newcastle. But with those tough fixtures at the start of the season, I'll probably be looking elsewhere. Then you missed the consistent Harry Kane, which you guys might be picking, but I'm going to focus more on that kind of midfield slot. So there's a couple of options there that you guys can look at. I don't know Ferguson, from a Brighton point of view, if he plays the majority of minutes, could be a great shot. And then you also have Julian Alvarez near him. But the one player, as mentioned, Visa, comes in a very cheap price point, great points per 90 minutes, and therefore he might be the shot to look at. So I know there might have been those of you out there with him in your drafts. I do apologize if I kind of leaked the massive gem to look at, but I do think he might be one of the most underrated forwards in the game at the moment. So if there's one thing to conclude from this video, it's that you guys should still pick Erling Haaland, even though he is going to be overpriced. And just keep your guys' eyes on the Brentford transfer situation, because if they don't sign anyone, Mbuma and Visa might be great shots to look at. Don't worry, I'll be going more in depth into this graph in the future video, when I do look at the best forwards to get. But let me know what forwards you guys have in your current draft. This is basically going to wrap up the video guys, hope you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. Stay tuned for more content coming up this preseason. And thanks to all the new members that have joined up. But I'm going to sign off. This has been Davey FPL and I'm out. Cheers, bye.